an environmental activist and director health of Mother Earth Foundation, Nemo Basi, joins me now from Bielsa to discuss the oil spill and its implications to the health and environment of people in the state. Uh, hello, uh, Nemo. Nice to have you on Newsnight. I'm sure uh, in your over three decades of environmental activism, this is one oil spill probably next uh, to the uh, Kwaibo uh, spill of Mobile uh, almost uh, uh, 15, 16 years ago. Am I right? Um, thank you. Um, you are right. This is one of the worst oil spills we've experienced in the Niger Delta. But it's just one. It's also, it can also be said that this is one in the number of the spills that we're having because this particular oil well had a spill uh, in 2019 uh, for which uh, Aito has uh, sued Shell. Uh, and and we, we can remember also the very major uh, gas rig explosion that happened, Chevron's gas, uh, gas rig explosion that happened in 2012 uh, when they were drilling at the Funiwa uh, well. Uh, but what, what has happened this time around is extremely disappointing in terms of response. When that uh, Chevron's oil uh, gas rig blew up, there was effort to drill a relief well uh, that, that eventually actually res resolved the problem. Well, and maybe they, they, they did not actually say uh, how that was achieved, but something was done and achieved. Uh, but this time around, we, we, a few days ago, we heard that in two days, the spill at Nimbe will be stopped. But as we speak, that spill, uh, there's no confirmation that it's been stopped. And it, it does show that the, the operations in Nigeria don't have serious contingency plans on how to respond to things like this, which they should know would happen. For an oil well that was drilled and capped many years ago, left in that kind of derelict sit uh, situation, uh, they should know. Anyone who buys this kind of uh, this kind of uh, facilities from transnational oil companies should know that they are buying serious liabilities. And so this is both shocking, disappointing, and a big embarrassment to the nation, and of course very dangerous for the communities and for our ecosystems. Very dangerous indeed, Nemo, uh, and uh, you hit the nail on the head when you talked about the oil wells, you know, farmed out by the IOCs, that is the international oil companies, to indigenous Nigerian investors without really uh, taking a look at the wellheads and the years of deterioration uh, in, in, on, on them. But where is the place of the Nigerian engineer? We hear that... Uh, the experts to come and cut the oil back to stop the spill. I even technicians coming from abroad. Where is Koren? Where is the Nigerian Society of Engineers? You mean we don't have capable hands, whether in Austria or in uh, private concerns, to do the job? Well, uh, the question is is not. I wouldn't really, really want to go to talk about whether Korean has engineers to handle this or not. But let's just say that before any corporation, any company buys of buys the the uh, oil fields or oil wells or pipelines from companies like Shell, Chevron, Mobil, or any other one, uh, they should first check if that company has the capacity to handle a facility that is not really in top, top shape. Uh, and, and the Nigerian government has a responsibility to check to see before they agree, because corporations are divesting, in quotes, they're divesting from onshore, onshore wells and facilities where they would be held responsible and accountable by the communities, and they want to go to deep waters where things could happen and nobody sees. For example, there's been a well fire at Aurora One offshore on those state for more than a year now are you here you don't hear that in the news not nobody's focusing on that but that is that is another that's another example showing us that if these corporations wash their hands off their derelict dilapidated equipment and facilities onshore and go offshore they, we're going to really have a serious situation where we suffer these harms onshore and then terrible things happen offshore and nobody even sometimes talks about it or even hears about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a serious situation because this is happening. This Nembe, 
the Santa Barbara River well is right in a place that is very accessible, close to communities. Uh, and this is going on for more than three weeks before attempts are being made to, to, to kill, to kill the, the well and to recap it. When the Gulf of Mexico oil spill occurred in 2010, that oil well that, that, that failed, that rig that failed was about 80 kilometers offshore. But before, in a few days, when that accident happened, everyone was mobilized. They mobilized the equipment. Within a day, a few, a few days, they, were, they began to drill, to drill a relief well so as to, to stop that one. Uh, it's not a thing like somebody's going to move there with a spanner and then just cap it or, or go there with, uh, uh, with the fire extinguisher and stop. This is, this is something that needs very serious technical action very serious technical action and you're being economical whether uh, we have uh, members and uh, uh, engineers who are capable in nigeria here to stop that uh, action but let us look at the socio-economic impact and the damage uh, to the environment in nimbi and its surrounding creeks and 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 the rest shouldn't there be a kind of vicarious liability here involving all the players uh, from that uh, particular well well you're, you're right the the oil business in nigeria is uh, is carried out as joint ventures we have nmpcs involved companies are involved so all of them are responsible for for what is going on uh for example the organic cleanup is being the polluters are the ones paying you having payment from shell from nmpc from total and the other ones and uh, other payment expected from refineries so all those who have their fingers in the pie who have their fingers on this oil well they are responsible and now the, that oil spill from santa barbara well has gone up to the ocean now from reports we are receiving from coastal communities it, it crossed over from Bayesa to river state now it's gotten to to oh, the ocean and um, and this is very destructive because uh, whether even if now we can see the pollution, the booms that are being put there are not capable of stopping the spread. So the spread is going over the boom because of the pressure and the quantity. They're talking about a few thousands of barrels, but we're talking about hundreds of thousands of thousands, hundreds of thousands of barrels of the of crude oil that is being spilled into the ecosystem. And this this stuff contains very toxic and poisonous heavy metals that are now going to enter into the into the food chain and affect human beings those who are going to eat the fish the crops from this area uh, and the fish from downstream uh, and if, if you read the book the riddle of oil or the oil thief talks about although it's fiction but it has facts talks about this thing could go to a very far extent that you cannot even predict by just looking at the video or being in the community that is uh, most most affected by by this spill so we have in the situation where uh, metals like uh, cadmium, like arsenic, like lead, heavy metals that cause cancers, that cause kidney failures, that cause miscarriages and stillbirths, all kinds of destruction going on now. And it's not happening. It can be sending bags of rice to the community is good, but this doesn't address the long term health impact on the communities. And they have somebody has been responsible for this, accountable for this and held uh, fully, fully responsible on our uh, uh, Absolutely. Uh, Nemo Basi, uh, no better place to really drop the anchor there. And um, we just hope that government and all those uh, whose responsibility would be to make the cleanup will expedite action very fast. Nemo Basi is an environmental activist and director of Health of Mother Earth Foundation.